And so, How can she um, get on radio blocks? Ron is going to be talking about full faith and credit. And so, as you know, Ron has been really enlightening us over these last few oh, months okay. here about what is it's really going way. on, what we're dealing with, oh. how to deal with it. So um, we can't say anymore that we don't know. And we are in a time where it's the awakening time now. So we are woke. And I appreciate, Ron, uh, that he's coming on and giving us all of this information. As you, as you know, Ron is on Saturdays at um, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And he's also here uh, Wednesday and Tuesday, too. Are you back, Ron? Okay. I'm back. Yes, I am. Okay. And uh, let's. Let's get started. Now, uh, I understand that you were uh, busy or tied up for Saturday yeah. and you didn't get a chance to hear the program. Did you get a chance to go to the archives? And yes, listen? I did. Very, very interesting. And you're going to have to have them back on again so we can expand <laughs> the audience. Uh, very yes. enlightening. Man, those, those ladies are something else. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, do a presentation at their office, and uh, hopefully I can record it, and maybe okay. I can do it live. But I know I can record it, and I'll be able to play that on the on the air once I get it set up. Because okay. if you heard me, I ask her. Because see, they need to be brought up into um, 2015. Yeah. They're still like in the civil rights era. Yeah. And. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to bring them up. They're kind of slow because they're, you know, they they do a lot of work, a lot mm-hmm. of work, and they, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are bugging the hell out of them. You can imagine. Yeah. And so I I know how to tap in. I've known both of the ladies, and the, there's three of them. That uh, Marion Kramer, mm-hmm. she wasn't there. I've mm-hmm. known them ever since the '60s. Okay. And uh, we've all worked together, so I know how to handle them. So I'm going to uh, do this presentation, and then I'll let everybody know if it'll be live or uh, Memorex, <laughs> live right. or, or tape it. Yeah. Because okay. they're, they're, dealing, they're dealing with the um, civil rights, and you're telling them to deal with treaty. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Say it a better way. They're dealing with the public entity, and I want them to get private in their presentations and pull all of their clients into the private realm. You see? Okay. See what I'm saying? They, okay. So I have to move on them first to get them to understand. And as these people come in, they can convert them just through education or send, send them to me, and I'll educate them that we need to get into the private realm. Okay. However, from the civil rights uh, realm, they can <clears throat> file paperwork. You heard me talk about that. They can file paperwork, but it all goes through the phony government of United States of America, and they have tricks and gimmicks and all kind of shenanigans that they'll play to just tie you up. And as the end result, there'll be a what they call a Mexican standoff, you know, or some type of deal that you'll make, and then everybody's happy. See, I yeah. found that, that treaties that – you know, treaties we have with them and all of these uh, uh, plea bargains, it's it's only a way for them to say, I don't know what else to do with you, so let's just call it even, Stephen. So let's just negotiate on how we can pay each other off and we can call it quits. And most people fall for that because they think they're getting a deal. But what, what they're really telling you is they're idiots and don't know how to handle your situation, so let's just make a deal. Mm-hmm. You did. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you can easily see that if you're dealing with courts. Because mm-hmm. once you go in and start saying the proper things, it knocks them completely out of their jurisdiction. So rather than admit that they're out of their jurisdiction, they'll say, well, you got a $100 fine here. Let's just do a $45 fine and we'll go to the next, next, next customer. And you say, oh, cool. And you pay it and run out like you're into something. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It's, it's all it's all a game. It's all a game. Yeah. 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 All right. So uh, let's talk about this full faith and credit. I did a lot of uh, searching to try and find a good definition for it. And 
It's a lot of noise. Is that you? No, man? that's I'm connecting my uh, plug, my phone. Oh, okay. It, it, okay. It, it's, it's got now, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I tried to find a good definition so that uh, we could all understand full faith and credit. It's a very good, uh, 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 let's call it an article in the Constitution, the full faith and credit. However, it can be used in a detrimental way. And the detrimental way is they have reinvented or re, uh, uh, yep, reinvented slavery. Hmm. But that's that's in the faith and credit clause. And so let's let me show you how they tricked us. Now the the first section one says faith and uh, full faith and credit shall be given to each state to the public acts records, and judicial proceedings of every other state. And the Congress may, by general laws, prescribe the manner in which such acts, records, and proceedings shall be proved and the effect thereof. So what they're really saying is whatever happens in one state by law or by uh, legislat- legislation, it is carried over to the next state by legislation. But now we got we we must keep in mind that we're only talking about thirteen colonies. See you when you start reading the Constitution, they never use the word America. They only use it when they uh, in the preamble, and we can flip. I got that right in front of me, but we'll flip back to that. But they mentioned America only in the preamble. And in America, they're saying that the United States is going to do what it can and abide by all the rules, regulations, so that they can be in good harmony with the United States of America. You understand that, Bill? Right, right. So they're really saying United States is going to work with America, and then we'll become United States of America. So what However, they're saying is the 13 colonies is going to work with America to yes. to work with yes. the corporation. Yes, Beth. Yes. Okay. And okay. when you read and when you read history, you got to get yourself out of history and read it from afar because they use language that was used during that period. And I will guarantee you, when you start reading history coming out of 1600. All they're going to talk about is the United States, and nobody catches that. They don't start talking about the United States of America until mm-hmm. they, they give you the preamble to the Constitution, for one, and then when they get to 1871, they create the United States of America. Right. And, it's, and so, you know, you, you really have to have your mind – I took a, a class – Way back. I I don't know the name of it, but it was a number class. I think I mentioned it to you before, Beth. When they would say things in in this class, and I I don't know what it was. If somebody knows, I would appreciate them telling me because I'd like to go back and get a refresher course. But they, they would say things like, one, three, five, seven. What would be the next number? Do you recall me? Working with you on that uh, phone? Uh, if, if, if you did, I can't. It's been a while ago. Okay. Well, think about what I'm saying. Just think. Okay. One, three, five, seven, and what's, and, and what's the next number? Nine. Yes. Yes. Now. You, this class I took uh, took me into that, and and that's about all I can remember is the number part of it. But they used uh, letters, they used phrases, they used a whole lot of things. Now, why is that important? Because when I look back at 1604, when the first colony was established by the London Company of Great Britain, it was called the Virginia Company. 
Virginia Company was the most racist company that you could imagine. However, they had to be that way because they were sent into a new world over here, and they were commissioned to set up a, a commerce, and they were not given the, the the all of the tools to be successful. So they had to send workers to help them set up this commerce. Now, what would be the comp? What I'll ask you, Beth. What would be the commerce in 1604? Just give me a guess. What could be the commerce? Uh, uh, what? Well, I, I, All right, I, 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 let, let me help you. I don't want to put you on the spot. Let me okay. help. Shipping, shipping would be number one. Okay. But if shipping, but if shipping came in with with goods, you had to have something to put on it to to send it back in order to set up commerce. It's not a one. It's not a one way deal. It's it's more of a, uh, a, a a give and take. So if they sent goods from England to the the, the new colonies, the new colonies had to send some back. So their industry had to be one of two things: agriculture or hunting. So they could get pelts, fur pelts. They could get beaver pelts. Right. They could okay. get fox pelts. Or they could go into fields or create fields and start uh, planting crop, uh, tobacco, sugar, tea, stuff like that. And that's what made the industry turn back in those days. Now, if you put your mindset into that, you'll understand that racism was not really a uh, a given. It was more of a commodity because you had to have someone to work the fields. And then when they began to complain that they needed workers, England sent those damn indentured servants over. That created a market. Oh, man. All right, hold up, Ben. Okay. It looked like they just kicked in. Did you get it? Uh, Yep, he got it. All right, Ben. Yep, there you go. We just kicked in our uh, radio talk, so that's why that came in. Okay. All right. So my point is, all I'm saying is, there had to be a commerce, a civilization set up, and it was set up. Now, they had to have some rules. One of the first rules that was set up was that faith and credit, because they wanted to make sure as these colonies begin to establish themselves, that they had rules that would go over into all of the colonies. So... It reads in section one that I read that each state would agree to full faith and credit shall be given to each state to the public acts, records, and judicial proceedings of every other state. So that means that you had to, whatever you came up with, I had to abide by it in my state and vice versa. And the Congress may be made by general laws prescribe the manner in which such acts, re- uh, records, and proceedings shall be proved and the effect thereof. Now, all of that sounds pretty good until you p- look at the biggest problem they had in 1604, and that was the slaves. They had to have a way to control the slaves. The slaves were mad, evil, and upset. What they brought in from England, they made deals with them from England. In other words, you were given a five-year term for stealing, and if you go to the New World, you could work off those five years. In 10 years, you'd be a free person. So most of them would jump on that. Now, how was they going to get to the free world? They had to travel. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it be what I know, and that is they had to come from Great Britain down to the Virginias. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about overseas, but we can throw overseas in. I cannot picture in my mind how everything started in America, but yet the ocean was used to travel a- a- across. Right. And uh, I, I, I'm going to leave it alone until I get more information. 
But some like the slave trade of millions of people coming over on slave ships. I'm, I ain't buying that. So don't even try to run that by me. But if you're bringing indentured servants over, they have a reason to come because they would make a contract in England. Let's say, let's go over there. In England, they would make a contract that if you pay my way over there, I'll work for you an extra year to pay off my my passage. So I would go over peacefully. I wouldn't try to kill you or stab you to death as we went across the water. Or okay. if they, when they went into Africa, uh, I, I read in, in, in a lot of books that people did research, other people, they would go into certain areas and tell those, the, the Africans, there's a world over there of gold falling off the trees, and you can just pick it up off the ground. I will sit, take you over there, and you will work and pick up the gold. You'll pay me back, and we'll live happily ever after. A lot of them fell for that lie. You see, as soon as they got on the ship and got here, that's when the trick was flipped the script and it was put in chains and made them go to work. Mm. Now, there were deals made that were upheld because they always talk about a blackie named Melvin Johnson. That's the blackie that uh, uh, I'm looking at. They came here to Detroit. Uh, Woo. Yeah. Anyway, he wrote about slavery as we know it or taught from Hollywood was created by a black man. And this black man's name was Johnson. Now, what happened? Johnson came over as a slave in, in, in indentured servitude or on a promise. He worked himself out of it. He got some money, worked himself to get – he bought land and set up his own plantation, black man. We're talking about 1600, black man, got his okay. own plantation. He began to bring slaves in. Now, the slaves came in the same way he did, but it was discovered that one of the slaves – Paperwork got confused, or I don't know why it whatever happened. But he worked over his time on his contract. Now, if you're a slave, you cannot uh, sue your master. Everybody should know that here in the United States. We can't get out of this crap if we're still slaves. So he had a freed person sue Johnson, and when Johnson realized that he was going to lose the case, he freed the guy, gave him all of his money so it would not disrupt his plantation. But then Johnson found out that the slave could not sue and nobody could stand in for the slave. So he went back to court and the court reversed everything, put that blackie back into slavery. And the man that put him in, that, 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 that filed the suit, they put him in jail. Hmm. Okay. And that program and that program that I just described, it was used coming forward because everybody said, "Well, now if the blacking mm-hmm. can keep them on indefinite, then we can keep them on indefinite." So over a period of time, it didn't happen overnight, but right. over a period of time, most of the slave masters began to keep their slaves and would not release them. There were a lot of programs to be released. They had one called the Manumission, where the Catholic Church or one of the churches got involved, and they wanted to uh, 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 make sure that their Catholic parishioners followed Jesus or God or the Pope, whatever. Anyway, they were releasing slaves through contracts, and it worked for a while, but then when they figured out that uh, it was not feasible or not economical to do that, they immediately begin to change. And you know there's rotten apples in every barrel. So when you start throwing no racism in, you got a problem. And when you start throwing sex in, that's about as bad as racism. When you got rape-type sex, that's almost bad as racism. So right. now they were keeping them women or vice versa. The women owners were keeping, was keeping the men, and they would, they would take care of business. Let's put it that way. Now, full faith and credit – was always used two ways, a good way and a bad way. Most of the time, it was a bad way. Now, when you get to slavery and go to section two of the full faith and credit is when it gets ugly. The citizen of each state 
shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens of the several states. That's paragraph one. Paragraph two, here's where we get into slavery. A person charged in any state with treason, felony, or other crime. How about stealing an apple? And other crime who shall flee from justice and be found in another state shall be demand of the executive authority of the state from which he fled be delivered up to be removed to the state having jurisdiction of the crime. Did you get that? That's uh, your, uh, a revision of your slave act. Because the slaves were being held illegally, because slavery in most places began to be illegal. Not in all places. But since they had contracts, see, a lot of people look at every slave as being Hollywood's old Black Joe. Off the ship, beat the hell out of them, make them work. And that type of thing. That is not the case. I've always said slavery was more of a working contract. 90% of the working contracts were fraud and illegal, but the people didn't know it. They were stealing from the slaves. I, re- I remember seeing a program, a, a old, one of them old black Joe, I don't know, might have been uh, Gone with the Wind or one of them. Anyway, the young boy had learned how to count. He was about 9, 10, 11 years old. The daddy told mama, well, we're going to get freedom this time because I got all the money. I mean, I got the crops in as sharecroppers. We're going to go see Mr. Charlie, and Mr. Charlie going to pay us off, and we're going to be free and blah, blah, blah. He went to see Mr. Charlie with all his figures and all of that, and Mr. Charlie said he was about $2,000 short. Well, the young black boy was sitting there looking at old Mr. Charlie, changing them zeros and moving him, <laughs> moving him once. But he kept pulling on his daddy's leg, talking about Papa, Papa. Mr. Charlie cheating. <laughs> so Charlie, Charlie saw it, told the black boy, get your butt out of here, get out of here, ran him out. So now the daddy's sitting there knowing something is wrong because his, his wife and everybody had counted it. So he had the nerve to say to Mr. Charlie, are you sure them figures are right? Oh. Mr. Charlie looked at him and said, my wife did these figures, mm. and are you trying to say a white woman can't count? No, Mr. Charlie. No, Mr. Charlie. I didn't say, oh, you're going to be all. Oh. So now he called the sheriff because he know he's in trouble and right. told him that the black man had said, so, black man got in trouble. That's my bottom line. Black man right. got in trouble. So I know that there were contracts. And a lot of that slave crap that you that they talk about, it didn't happen that way. But that's your your view as you want it to be. But I'm looking a little at it a little deeper. And as I read certain things, I notice that they talk about working contracts. Now, that full faith and credit was used if Miss if 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 uh, Charlie uh, uh, the, the, the black slave, old black Joe, if he got mad and took his wife and kids and said, we leaving here, and headed up north, you know he didn't know where he was going. Mr. Charlie get his uh, hire a gang and go get him and drag his booty back. They could do that without even taking him to court. If he knew where, Mr. T- where that old black Joe was, he went up there and got him and drug his butt back. And it was constitutional because the full faith and credit covered that. Now, the next paragraph was interesting also. No person held to service or labor in one state under the laws thereof, escaping into another state, shall in consequence of any law or regulation thereof be discharged from such service or labor, but shall be delivered up on claim of of the party to whom such service or labor may be due. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> That's in your constitution, Beth. And you know they haven't changed it. 
So when you in Detroit and got a warrant for your arrest and drive out to Gross Point, and Gross Point pull you over for a taillight or, or drive in wild black, find out you got a warrant, once they call back, they're going to deliver that slave back over here, but he's got to be compensated for it. So there's a there's a network. I heard there was a network. I can't prove this. But the, every slave they catch in Gross Point or suburbs and send back over here with a warrant, they get up, they get compensated. Okay. I can see that. The whole system is set up. Complaint. The whole system is set up uh, uh, about money. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Oh, let me see. Wow. It looks like everybody's gone. Wait a minute. Wallet? It looks like everybody's gone. I still got to call him. Hello? Wait, Ron. Let me go over here. Okay, hold on a minute. Uh, those that are too. listening, just uh, hold on. I'm going to reconnect with uh, you Ron. You got bed? Talk to her. Nope. No, I'm going to uh, hang up and I'm going to call back. Hold on. Yep, she's trying to get me. Hello. Yes, sir. That's the far right. I love you. Yep. Now I hear. Now, can you hear me, Ron? Jump in the blind, man. Okay. All right. What up? I don't know. Um, I think I know. That was on my end over here because um, I had two chat rooms open. Oh. I mean, not chat rooms. I had two studios open, and I closed one of them. So that's what did it. Oh, well, the question is, how much? How long were you were you? Oh, I just you gone? did it. I just did it a second ago. Because I was talking. You. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Well, I was what I was saying was when I read when you read these other paragraphs, you'll see that slavery is still alive. Because the th- one, two, three, the third paragraph in section two says, No per did you hear me read this, Beth? No yes. person held Okay. So that and I told you that if you owe have a warrant in Detroit for, you know, child support, tra- traffic tickets, it don't matter. And you driving over in Warren, Michigan, and get stopped for a taillight, they, they they run your, your stuff and find out it's a warrant. They call over here. They will hold you until someone comes and gets you, just like, this, just like slavery. And they, Warren uh, Police Department, will be compensated for turning that slave in back over here. Full faith and credit. Okay. You dig it? I didn't know they was getting compensated. <laughs> oh yes, I was told that. I, you know, I. I, I it I makes don't know sense. How the money's it being. makes sense. It makes sense because yeah. everything well, is about was in, money. Yeah, and if I was in Warren, I would surely uh, figure out either you are gonna stay over here and pay me my uh, traffic ticket tail light, but I'm gonna still turn you in because there's a warrant for your arrest. So you might as well be paid for it. You caught the slave, kind of a runaway. And if you read section uh, two, paragraph three, it tells you you have a right to do that. So when they talk about doing away with slavery, see, if we read and understand, that's article Article four of the Constitution. So how did they get rid of slavery? You dig it? Right. If that ain't slavery. But see, what they'll probably argue with you about, and that is... Uh, they had a crime. They committed a crime. If they hadn't committed a crime, they never would have did that. You did. So I I I was talking to a brother yesterday. I, I get so tired of hearing that. It just uh, when you're talking to a dumbass Peckwood, he, that's the first thing that come out of his mouth because he wants to cover his ass. Excuse my language, but he wants to cover his butt so you don't accuse him of being racist. So he'll say, "Well, did you say he stole the chicken? Yeah. Well, then we did this and we did that." And so it's his fault that he got caught. Now, I looked up and talked to a gentleman yesterday about Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin, that cop killed that young boy, 19-year-old, without a gun. They they don't know what to do with the case because they can't make it be 
what they want it to be. They can't. There's no reason. There's no way at this point for them to create anything. They're trying their damnedest to create a crime that would help them justify killing him. But when you look deeper into Madison, Wisconsin, you'll find that the population, the black population of Madison, Wisconsin, is six percent. Now, the, the 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 population of the prisoners from Madison in the network of the the uh, prison system is fifty percent. So you got a triple Ferguson up north in a city called Madison, Wisconsin, and the damn cop that killed him, he killed another uh, 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 Latino in 207. They couldn't figure out how to justify it, so they ended up saying that the man that they killed wanted to commit suicide. They call it a self-suicide. So he just ran into the police and let them kill him. 208, the the same cop that killed that 19-year-old, oh, he got a letter of valor because they complimented him for making a quick split-second decision between life and death and killed that boy. And he had a pellet gun in his hand that was empty. And the report that he had the gun was on record at the police station, and they said there was no bullets involved in the gun. Almost similar to that Cleveland uh, 12-year-old that had right. the play gun. Right. Or or the gentleman in the BB gun in the uh, Walmart or whatever gun. He, I think it was the BB gun in yeah. the Walmart. Now, when I was coming up, that's what boys did. They played with guns. So yes, I played, boys can't I, I played <laughs> right. So they I play cowboy every day. Right. So now you mm-hmm. can't have a, a play gun. The young boys can't have guns anymore without getting killed. No. Nope. Nope. That's your answer is no. You wouldn't want to buy a gun for your a young child, twelve, fourteen year old. I got guns every Christmas. And when daddy had a good a good a good uh check, I'd get two guns. But most of the time I got old single gun and old raggedy cowboy hat, but I was into something. That's all I wanted. You know? Yeah. Now, let's go a little deeper in the good side of of uh I I went to Black Law's dictionary and they talk about faith and uh credit clause. And it's kind of shaky, but I just want to put this out before I drop this hammer on you that I got. It says the clause, faith uh, faith and credit clause, of the United States Constitution, Article 4, Section 1, and I say Section 2 also, which provides that various states must recognize legislative acts, public records, and judicial decisions of other states within the United States. See how they keep talking about the United States? They never take America. There are exceptions to this. A major a major one being that a state need not recognize a divorce decree of a state where neither spouse was a legal resident. Doctrine means that a state must accord the judgment of a court or another state of another state the same credit that is entitled to it entitled to in the courts of that state. So now we're talking about that same-sex marriage. They're trying to cover their butt with that. A judgment or record shall have the same faith, credit, conclusive effect, and obligatory force in other states as it has by the law or usage in the state from whence taken. So... I ain't going to get into that, but they they, they, they added, because it said it was added into the faith and credit, that a divorce has a little bit different understanding. Now, why am I talking about this today? Why is faith and credit important today? Well, we all are trying to get free, 
And in, and in getting free, we understand that our worth is a million plus. I'll just use that number. Is a million plus. So when you talk about full faith and credit, you want to ask yourself, does that affect me as an individual? And the answer is, yes, it does. A phrase used, here's a, here's a definition, a phrase used to describe the unconditional guarantee or commitment by one entity to back the interest and principle of another entity's debt. Hello? Debt. <laughs> This phrase, <laughs> definition of full faith and credit, okay. a phrase used to describe the unconditional guarantee or, or commitment by one entity to back the interest and principle of another entity's debt. Now somebody talk to me. How does this affect you? Every one of you out there. <laughs> Get them, Ron. Get them. That's right. Y'all want me to read it again? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if I give you the key word, everybody's going to say, whoa. Here we go. It's a phrase. Notice how vague this stuff is. It's okay. a phrase used to describe the unconditional guarantee, unconditional guarantee, or commitment by one entity to back the interests and principles of another entity's debt, T-E-B-T. Yes. Now, what is that saying? That said, with your ignorant, un, uh, <laughs> let me get nice, with your uneducated, non-reading, non-concerned uh, self, everybody out there, when they created that straw man for you, that straw man would be an entity. And out of your ignorance, they worked your dumb ass in the cotton field to pay off the debt of that straw man every day. And uh -huh. they can do it by full faith and credit. So you, you will never come out of being a slave the way they got it set up. <laughs> now, don't think I'm bringing this to you without a remedy. Everything I know you. I, yeah, I know you do. But the, the way they got it going here is like you got to pay for that entity. That's yes, you man. do. And they call it. They use a, a little tricky word called a surety. S u r i i t y. S u r i t y. Surety. You are a surety which means you unconditionally guarantee the government and the corporations or you are committed to the government and the corporations by the entity of the straw man to back all of his interests and principles of him and all of his debt. And you didn't say yes, you didn't say no, you just keep paying every day, and you're crying and begging, and you can't figure out how to get out of debt. Mm. That's, 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 wow. That's, ain't that deep? I mean, I mean you, you don't even have to be ignorant. It's just that how they use so much trickery and wording and yes. twisting well, things around. And well, well thank, thank your creator for individuals like Jonah Bay and a big old dummy like high school dropout named Ron March that we look deeper in yeah. situations yeah. and you can see the reality 
once you go deeper. Jonah taught me how to go deeper and get to the real root of the of the situation. And I'm gonna do that before we leave today. Okay. I'm gonna do it in hour two to keep you in suspense. Okay. All right. The full faith and credit commitment is typically employed by a government to help lower the bargain borrowing cost of a smaller, comma, less stable government or a government sponsored agency. When this occurs, the smaller government or agency takes on the backer's credit quality. Now that one hits it in the head when I get to what I'm going to tell you next, 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 next hour. So we'll have to come back to that. Now let's go down a little lower here. I'm gonna go down a little lower and 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 give you this one. This is a good one. Full faith and credit. United States Treasury secured Treasury bond. That's what your CISQ account becomes a secured Treasury bond. An unconditional commitment to pay interest and principal on debt, usually issued or guaranteed by the United States Treasury or another government entity. <laughs> now, what I left out, I should have went and pulled up, and I might be, I'm going to do it next hour. And that is, who's responsible for your debt, Beverly? Let's, let's take a figure. Let's take, I don't know where you live, but I've met you and I know you a, a nice looking lady and got some nice clothes. So I'm going to say your worth, no, your debt. All right, let me do, I'm going to do mine. I'm going to do mine. All right. Uh, no, I can't do mine because I ain't got nothing. But my wife, no, I can't do that. She'll kill me when I can. <laughs> All right, let's take the typical black man. He work every day. His wife, they live in Southfield. They work every day, and they, they just Uncle Remus niggas. They just Negroes, colors. Okay? okay. All right. Now, you can guesstimate that their debt is about, Two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars, and that's being very conservative, mm -hmm. because you know they got a nice house, they got cars, they probably got a good savings account or or something like that. Their children are probably in school, so that makes creates debt with their daggum, uh, you know, their uh, 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 scholarships and different mm -hmm. stuff. So we'll just keep it around two hundred thousand now. The question that I'm asking you from the Constitution of the United States, full faith and credit, who oh, who owns that debt? Who, who Who's responsible for that debt? No, that ain't good. Is it the straw man? Well, well, who's supposed to pay that debt by the Constitution? There you go. Who's respo Who's supposed to pay that debt? According to 1933, the big, the the, the New Deal, H.J.R. Uh, 192. Who is responsible for all of your bills? Wow, I told you that. You talking about the Pope? No. No. I thought no. that's when we went bankrupt. When we went yep. bankrupt. He, yep, he did, and 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 they paid off all of your debt, but the corporation didn't let you know that they paid them off. But that ain't what I'm talking about. Who, okay. Uh, the United States Treasury is responsible for your debt. When they took all the gold and silver in oh, May of 1933, okay. a Senator McFadden from Ohio said, wait a minute, y'all can't do that. How are we going to pay our bills? Ah, uh, shut up. He said, okay. He went and, and put together a lawsuit a penalty of death and they saw it knew it was coming so they hurry up and created hjr 192 to cover their butt and what they said in hj 192 in in legal lease 
because nobody know how to read legalese. They said in legalese that the government will pay your your debt. Now, I can show you that. I, I can read it to you, and I think I can pull it up quick enough on the break so I can yeah. read it next hour. Okay. So, because they, 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 in the chat room, they say, can you give them the articles that you're reading from so they can keep up with you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm reading right now is uh, faith and faith and credit, full faith and credit, and I search for for different definitions because it's still vague. The clause, because see, when I read it, the way Article uh, Section One reads it, everybody say, "Oh, that's good." But when I go into Section Two and show you where slavery is legal through debt and uh, uh, faith and credit. Now you say, whoa, wait a minute. You dig? And now I'm talking about debt and I'm talking about the straw man. And it says the unconditional commitment to pay interest and principal on debt usually issued or guaranteed by the United States Treasury or another government entity. So why are y'all crying and screaming and talking about you in debt when United States Treasury is supposed to pay your debts? Because there is no money. Now, if you're still stuck on a uh, uh, dollar or five dollars or whatever it is, is money, then then you I can understand your, your stupidity. But a note, a dollar bill is a note, N O T E, just like a car note. Insurance note, cable note, all of those are debts. And the dollar was made so that the government could keep track of the debt because they circulate the money, put money in, take money out. They know how much is there. So they can tell you within a matter of an hour the up to at least a million dollars how much debt the United States has because they know how much they burned and they know how much they put in the system. Mm-hmm. You dig it? So we need to understand that. Okay? That's all I'm telling you. You need to know when you talk about full debt and uh, faith and credit, what does that mean to you? Now, when I tell you what it means to you, you're going to you're probably faint, fall out. So mm-hmm. tell that individual in the chat room just to chill. I, I'm going to take care of them. Okay. Because when I... What I'm going to give them, they may want to, what I'm going to give them, they may want to research that so that they don't have to know what I'm reading from. But they can look up full faith and credit clause and just throw it into Google and start reading, and you'll find what I'm talking about. Here's yeah, another one. You have section two, right? Yep. Is that what you're reading? Yep. On section two? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. If they wanted that, that's in your constitution. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought they wanted to know what I was reading from. This clause, uh, Article of, of Four, in right. the Constitution, right. is called the fa- Full Faith and Credit Clause. But they only talk about the good things. They don't talk about the negative things. There are four sections to the Faith and Credit of of of. of uh, Article 4. There's four sections. Just like I told you, when you look up the thir- uh, 13th Amendment and they only give you two sections, there are 20 sections. Right. And each section talks about keeping your black butt in slavery. <laughs> And you got nerve somebody say, well, they gave you the 13th Amendment. Hey, slavery's gone. Nigga, nigga, please. <laughs> mm. now, now, Help me, somebody. Now, you in section two, the obligation of state. That's what you, that's what you're reading at, right? The Article Still 4, mm-hmm. s- Article 4, section 2 starts out, the citizen of each state shall be entitled, entitled to all privileges. Okay. You see that? Okay. And yeah. then the next paragraph gets into the slavery clause. Oh, okay. And that's what everybody missed. Cause they just read a, the first and they, you know, because see, when you, uh, for example, 
When you get into your foreclosures, each state is has been fighting MERS, M-U-R-S. And each state have been, some states have been kicking their butt. Some states don't do anything, and other states lose. Well, when you sue to maintain your house and you use a case law from a winning state that whooped Mirror's Act ass, these dumbass lawyers tell you, oh, yeah, that's in another state. And you say, according to Article 4, Section 1, I can use any state I want, punk. But since we don't know that and get hung up in court, and when the judge see you don't know it, the judge agree with the lawyer and say, yeah, you can. that's in another state. You're in Michigan. We don't do that in Michigan. Some old crazy mess like that. Now you're sitting there stumped because you don't know the Constitution. You know, it's best to stay out. Don't get me wrong, because you ain't. Gonna, it's hard to go in there and argue with them crooks, because they are good crooks. They snakes. They good snakes. So it's hard to win. But these are the, the ways that they take care of you, because you don't read it all, so you don't really know. And quiet as kept, I've never read section three or section four, but I'm gonna do that. I can't do it today. I got too much to do on break, because I'm going to. Uh, what did I tell you I was gonna do, man? I forgot already. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pull up where it says that the government will pay your bills. Right. Oh, okay. We're getting close to the top. All right. The full faith and credit is Article uh, 4, Section 1. That's all they want to talk about. Provides the various states must recognize legislation act, legislative acts, public records, judicial decision in, in, in other states within the United States. There they go again. Nothing but states, United States. Right. It states that full credit shall be given to each state in public act. Now, the statute that implements the clause. <laughs> now, they use the word statute. I asked uh, one of my colleagues, is there a difference between uh, a statute and a law. And we got into the discussion, and I said, well, the only answer is if you look at legal difference, there, there, there is none. But if you look at lawful distance, it's like night and day, because a statute is only a proclamation by your legislators. In order for it to become a law, each state has a clause or an article in their state constitution how to challenge, and I read this to you before, challenge a statute. Now, the federal United States says uh, rule, everybody look this rule up, rule 5.1, rule 5.1. And the title of it is How to Challenge a Statute. And the only one that can declare a statute a law, see, statutes are public. A law is private, a lawful or a law is private. So the only way to justify it, the Attorney General has to send an affidavit and say that it is a lawful. Uh, law. It's a law. And he ain't coming because he knows 90% of all statutes are bullshit. They, just, they make them up overnight. A guy called me the other day and wanted to know what in traffic, what is impeding traffic? What does that mean? I told him, I said, that's a catch-all to trick you because they know they can't, they don't want to argue with you and they know that you can win so they say, we'll give you a ticket on impeding traffic, and we won't give you any points. And now you think you got a deal, so the insurance, your insurance don't go up. Right. See, that's great. That's graft. Think about that for a minute. That police officer just committed graft and corruption because he made a deal with you, and he don't have a right to do that. What the hell you stopped me for? Impeding traffic. What is impeding traffic? Well, I, if, either I'm going to do that or give me one for reckless driving. Now you get scared. Give me one for reckless driving, and we'll deal with that. And you better be in court when I, when I appeal it, and I'm coming to court. 
But rather than waste a lot of time and know he didn't do it right, he'll use that old, you were impeding traffic. Mm. Now, what does that do? You have to, if it was speeding two miles over the speed limit and it only cost $50, they'll charge you for imp- impeding traffic 150 or uh, or whatever. And if you squawk, you say, okay, $100. Next case. Now you really think you you got something and you wasn't even in there for nothing. And nothing to be on the record because that goes in the judge's pocket. Wow. Oh, help me, son. Uh, yeah, I, 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 they did me like that. I turned to right on a uh, a light, a red light, and you're supposed to wait till it turned green. And so he gave me something that, that wouldn't have no point. So I'm thinking he's doing me a favor. Yes, 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 yes. Now, was there a sign up, no turn on red? Yes, it was. Okay. I just All right. It. Well. All right. Okay. Well, here's what I did. I looked up the statute that imp- uh, implements the clause, and the statute is uh, Code 28 USC A, subsection 1738. And when you go to that clause, it says state and territorial statutes and judicial proceedings, full faith and credit. Ain't that ain't that cute? The acts of legislation of state, territory, or possession of the United States, or copies thereof, shall be authenticated, oh baby, by affixing the seal of such state, territory, or possession thereto. Do you hear that, Beth? Yeah, I hear Boy, you. I'm, a, I'm, gonna get you after, I'm gonna get you after we come back. The records and judicial proceedings of any court of any such state, territory, or possession, or copies thereof shall be proved or admitted in other courts within the United States and its territory and possessions by the attestation of the clerk. And seal of the court annexed. Oh, babe, I got you. Oh, if wow. a seal exists to, together with a, a, a certificate of a judge of the court that the said attest, attestation is a proper form, such acts, records, and judicial proceedings or copies thereof so authenticated shall have the same full faith and credit in every court within the United States and its territories and possessions as they have by law or usage in the courts of such state, territory, or possession from which they are taken. I'm begging everybody to come back, and I guarantee you within five minutes of coming back, I'm going to drop a bomb on you, and you're going to faint wherever you swear you're at. You're going to faint. You're going to fall out of your chair. So now, <laughs> now, now, Ron, you were just reading from Code 28, what? Code 28. Wait a minute. Let me go back up. <laughs> Code 28. Uh-huh. Uh, subsection 1738. 1738. Title, okay. Title 28. Title 28. U.S. Code. Okay. Title 28. U.S. Code. Subsection 1738. Okay. All right. I want everybody to be sitting down when I come back, and I guarantee you, I'm gonna knock you out. All right. <laughs> don't don't All hurt right. us, Ryan. Don't hurt us. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. All right. I'm gone. Okay, we'll, we'll be back in ten minutes. Back All right. and we're ready to roll. Shake, rattle, and roll. All right. Now, I got a couple of calls. No, they didn't they don't want to talk. They just sit back listening. Do you have any calls on hand, Beth? Uh, let me see what I have here. Let me go to my studio. Yes, I have a call. Hold on. Um, All right. Area code 980230. Okay. Are you there? Hello. Can I be heard? Yes, you can. 
Oh, okay, great, great. I've been, I, yes, how you guys doing? Beautiful day, beautiful day to you guys. If you if you uh, if you're in Detroit, because that's where I'm from, Detroit, Michigan. So beautiful yeah, day okay. we're having today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, here. It is a beautiful day. Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. All right, my qu- all right, my question is: my, First, I want to say that I appreciate you guys putting out all the information that you're doing. I, I really appreciate it. And right. It's always good to hear some people put that information out. Right. Now, my question, my, okay, my question is real quick: Is uh, when you're putting together the, the, um, the international building exchange, now does it matter that these that these documents that you get in affidavit? Does it have to be on a particular piece of paper, like? Considering that you put a document in, like you know, in college, and you just put it on a regular piece of paper, or does the paper have any significance when you're putting these documents together? Well, it depends. If you're going to send in an, uh, uh, um, a negotiable instrument, I always use what they call a uh, uh, legal paper, legal size paper. No, no, no. no. I use hundred uh, percent cotton. Hundred percent. Hundred percent cotton. Yeah, um, it's a gray paper. It's gray and it feels like um, kind of thick. You can get a box of okay. them, and if you if, and if you're putting in a negotiable instrument now, but if you're just writing documents, uh, regular letter paper, it would suffice. Okay. Unless so it make a legal. Somebody in the chat will okay. say it's, it's called bond paper. Bond paper. There oh. you go. There you go. Oh, look, yep. okay. And you can get it at different. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And they no, say get go number. Go they say get number thirty-two. All right. Mm-hmm. I got a couple of them. A couple of them. When I when I do a legal document or anything that deals with money or credit, I always put it on cotton paper. Yes. All right. Oh. Are you there, caller? Is that it? Yeah. 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 All right. I mean, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I got, and you know, I'm driving in my truck. I'm a truck driver at the moment, so I'm driving and trying to ask these questions at the same time because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get on the line unless I called in while I was driving. But my my All next right. statement, I got more questions. But my next statement would be is uh, the thing that you were talking about, uh, good faith and credit, earlier in your discussion was kind of sound kind of pertaining to the movie 20 Years Slave, the whole contract and slavery of the movie 20 Years Slave when I was watching that movie. It sounded a lot of like yes. the movie sounds a lot of like what you were talking about. So that was my statement. Correct. I probably would like to ask a lot more yep. other questions, but I'll let you go into your dissertation, and I'll get off the phone and just listen. Uh, Thank you for having me. All right. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. All call. right. And he's uh, totally correct. Even the movie uh, uh, Django mm-hmm. deals with full fret, faith and credit. And that's what wow. held the movie together. Now, we know people are not going to acknowledge you got some crooks out there. And since you're in the public realm, everybody, I want you to hear this carefully. If you're in the public realm, they can change the rules anytime they get ready. You know, look at Ferguson, look at Madison, look at New York, look at uh, Florida, Sanford, Florida. They change the rules as they see fit because they're in the public realm. And nobody uh, declared themselves uh, not 14th Amendment citizens. You never heard anybody say that. So that meant that you were a slave or a subject to the corporation. So they got a right to do what they want to do. Okay. Everybody understand that? Yeah. You know, y'all get you get to whining and carrying on and talking about they did this, they just crooks. No, they ain't. They ain't crooks. They doing what's legally, what they call legally uh, correct, and that is they can change the law as they see fit, as long as you a slave. That's like your, your dog. You say you feed your dog every day, but you feed him when you get ready to feed him. <clears throat> you don't have a certain time. He can't tell you what time it is. That's the same thing they do to you. They, you can't tell them what to do. They tell you what to do because you ain't nothing but a slave. And the worst slave is an idiot that don't know he's a slave. Set up there and argue with him. Okay? All righty. All right. So I want to uh, – we got some hot stuff here, Bev. I'm still going to knock your socks off, but I want to <laughs> run down. I got this thing called – I'm going to give you the title. The document is called The United States. A private, for-profit, 
federal corporation is bankrupt and has to pay your bills. Did you get that? Okay, that's the name of the article you're reading from? Yes, yes. Yes. And it starts out, everything is documented. I'll just give you the first, and I'm going to go down quickly. It's 11 pages, but I'm going to go down quickly. The first paragraph says the United States is a corporation, a legal fiction that exists well before the Revolutionary War and is backed up by a court case. That's when you know you're really into something, when you got it backed up by a court case. The Uni- Number two, the United States Code, Title 28 again, Part 5, Chapter 176, Subsection, Subchapter A, Subsection 3002. It, it gives you the definition of United States, a federal corporation. You dig it? Yep. All right. All right. Now, 1933, March 9, a, a bank emergency was declared by the president, President Roosevelt, because the insolvency, bankruptcy of United States, because of the bankruptcy of United States. And it gives you all the executive orders that were used. Now, you know, an executive order is nothing more than a dictate, a bull or a statue that has no legal uh, 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 foundation at all. It's like a directive. It's like a, a, a emancipation proclamation. He just open up your mouth and say something. And then you write it down and call it an executive order. Now, okay, I'm getting down to it. Now we're going to uh, March 9th, the new money paper promissory notes is issued to the banks in return for the government's obligations, bill of exchange, drafts, notes, trade acceptance, and bank, and bankers' acceptance. The new money will be worth uh, 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 100 cent on the dollar. Everybody got to remember that. You can only pay your bills a penny on the dollar. So if you owe $2,000 on your automobile and they send you a bill, your monthly note, is eighty dollars, and you're going to write it off. You can't write off to two thousand because the uh, uh, the coupon is eighty dollars. So you have to write your uh, 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 your note or your obligation is eighty dollars. Do you understand that, Bill? That's what they mean by dollar for dollar. So you can't write off the two thousand dollars. You got to write out what the monthly note is. Yes. That's on the paper. Now, you didn't ask me how do you write off the two thousand. Okay. <laughs> you write off. See, you got to go deeper, Bev. You got to go deeper. You write off the two thousand by calling them up and say, "Hey, I just hit the numbers for a million dollars. I want to pay this piece of crap off. Mm. Send me a. Listen to my words. Send me a firm offer." F-I-R-M, firm offer, and they'll send you one within 30 days, and it's a coupon, and it'll be $2,000 you owe. And they'll tell you on that firm offer, if you don't pay by that date, you can't use this because the dollar amount will change. So if you yeah. if, if they tell you, see, if they tell you to send it in by the 5th of the month, and you send it in on the tenth of the month for two thousand dollars, they'll reject it, throw it in the garbage can. Now you're gonna call Ron Mart and say, No man, you told me it was go work. Get off the phone. Don't call me, you big dummy. Didn't I tell you? You gotta do it dollar for dollar? Yes. And then they tell you they wanted it paid by the fifth? Yes. Yeah. Well why did you send it? Oh, my mama got sick and I had get off the phone. Bam, slam the phone down. This is the kind of calls I get. Damn idiots! Why do I want to talk to them? All right, I get. I won't call. Yeah, call we 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 used to do. We used to call them to pay. We used to ask for the payoff letter. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going on down quickly. The new money problems that no issue. I'm, I'm gonna skip that part. Let me go down. Uh, all right. Now Lewis Lewis T. McFadden brought formal charges, I just told you that, 
after they came up with all this trash to steal our stuff and took the gold away from us, May 1st, 1933. They took the gold, and they used an executive order, which is nothing more than a proclamation. All you had to do was clean your rifle and then tell them, go, go, go fly a kite. Because they, they, they can't get an uh, injunction or a warrant because it's an it's a executive order. Now, they may try to tear you door down, but you got a right to shoot and do your thing. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, McFadden brought criminal charges. And it's on, and all this is right here against the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve Bank System, the Comptroller of Currency, and the Secretary of the United States Treasury for numerous criminal acts including but not limited to conspiracy, fraud, unlawful conversion, and treason. The petition for articles of impeachment was thereafter referred to the Judiciary Committee and has yet to be acted on. He sent that in. It's still sitting there since 1933. So what did they do? On June the 5th, now he did it on May 23rd, June the 5th, to mitigate McFadden's charges and prevent being hung for treason, Congress passed Joint Resolution, H.J.R. 192, to provide United States citizens the right to set off all debt obligations as the consideration, something bargained for and exchange for the transfer of the gold and the property. So they took all your stuff, and then didn't give you nothing for it. It is against public policy, applied only to Congress, to pay a debt. Now, listen, write this down. Chapter 48, comma, 48 statute point 112 in the United States statutes at large is public law, applies to everyone else, meaning Congress has to pay your bills. It's right here. Y'all read it for yourself. In 1950, they declared bankruptcy, blah, blah, blah. The Treasury, uh, they set up the Treasury and appointed it for bankruptcy. We don't need to read that right now. I'm trying to get down to my highlighted stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, right, right, Rob, wait a minute. Tell me again the article you, you read in front so we can read with you. Okay, the name of the article is, let me go back to the top. United States, let me see, it's called the United States, comma, a private for-profit federal corporation, comma. And a private form, okay. A private form corporation? No, federal a corporation. Private, no, you missed the word. A okay. private for-profit. For for-profit, okay, gotcha. Federal corporation. Okay. Is bankrupt and has to pay your bills. I got you. All right. Go ahead. All right. I'm running down. I'm going to jump right to the red stuff. Okay. It says, under the 14th Amendment, private property cannot be taken or pledged for public use without just compensation. Hello? They cannot take your house without just compensation or due process of law. Now, everybody say, well, they did it under due process. Did they show you that someone else owned it? No. Did they show you the promissory note that you signed? No. So where is the due process? You didn't make payments. How do they know I didn't make payments? I paid the house off. When I signed the promissory note, it was paid in full. What the hell are you talking about? Well, then, if you want to argue about it, give me my promissory note back, and you can take the house. They can't do that because they cashed the promissory note. And it says right here, and here's a court case that will help you. It says private property cannot be taken or pledged for public use without just compensation, without legally providing them remedy to recover what is due them on their risk. See, they take your house because they made commitments that you were going to make payments and keep the promissory note alive. So they went out there and started diddly-dallying with your stuff. They didn't pay you for your stuff. 
And when you stop making payments because you lost your job, now they're going to penalize you by taking your house without due process. It's all right here. You don't have to argue with me. It, you, you know you got to get something legal involved in it, but I'm telling you, it's all right here. Now, it is to, uh, uh, is it to, to, to deprive him of it? Let me see. Where am I at? I'm going to skip that. The court case is right here. It's United States versus Russell. That's the name of the court case. Surety compels to pay debts for their principal have been deemed entitled or re- reimbursed, even without a contractual promise. And and probably there are few doctrines better established. And they got the court case right here. You are surety that I just read on your uh, 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 faith and credit because you don't know that you are an entity and the straw man is making debt, so you are the sharer of the straw man. And the straw man's name is on the mortgage, but your signature is there, but the straw man is the one that's on the paperwork. So you're talking about two different persons, or better yet, two different entities. Going on down. Now listen to this one. U.S. Code, Title 31, Section 3123, states that the United States government has an obligation to pay dollar for dollar principal and interest in legal tender all debts occurred by the American people. They use the word American right there. Hello. Hello, did y'all hear me? I'll do it again. <laughs> we love we love Jeff from here. <laughs> The United States Code, Title 31, Section 3123, states that the United States government has an obligation to pay dollar for dollar principal and interest in legal tender all debts occurred by the American people. It's right there. They're supposed to be paying your bills, not you. Because the straw man belongs to them. But as long as you are surety of it and don't realize it's two entities, you, out of your ignorance, is paying for, for, for it. Oh, help me, somebody. Oh, yes, we all need that one. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh, man. Thus, back in the national currency, uh, I can skip that. It's in green, but it talked about money. But I'm going to go on down, and I got some more stuff to drop on you. All right. We are operating under official public policy and public law set forth by the United States. When they confiscated all the lawful money in circulation back in 1933, and it became impossible to pay any debts with uh, pu- public sanctioned money, publicly sanctioned money, under the provisions of the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, in return, I'm reading from the Constitution, yeah. in, re- in return, for the confiscation of the lawful money, the United States became liable to pay the debt of the people as traditionary creditors, comma, comma, quite trustees of the people. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> now, as long, as long as they can trick you and make you think that you are the straw man in all caps, they laugh. And I ain't well, got the bomb on well, you yet. Okay, but wait a minute. But if we are uh, United States citizens, we are their slaves, so this wouldn't pertain to the slaves, right? You're totally correct. And I'm going to give you that because you're going to fall off the chair when I give you the other answer because you set yourself up to take the take the blow. <laughs> to take the... <laughs> I'm gonna take All the right. lick, huh? Okay. You're gonna take the lick for everybody. All right. All right. Okay. A for V, except for value applies 
when a demand is made for payment with implied consideration. So here comes a creditor telling you that you need a payment. If there's no original wet ink signed contract where both parties offer consideration, then there is no demand possible. Only demand with implied consideration, which according to UCC, which is Uniform Commercial Code, Commercial Code holds inherent risk to the insurer. If the instrument is accepted as consideration and returned for value, the issuer is reli- is liable for the bill. Now, what does that say? When you stamp it, accept for value, and send it back to that punk that sent it to you, he's got to pay the bill because you accepted it in good faith, and then you send it back. He sent you a contract. You said, I accept. But to balance the contract, I'm sending it back to you. You pay it. Hello? Hello? (laughs) I know. Y'all think I'm crazy. No. It's right here. Now, y'all need to read it to understand it the way I understand it. Because I know you just can't kind of grasp it overnight. So Yeah, somebody has a question, Ron. Go ahead with it. They say, why, if this stuff is on the record, why do we have to go through the long process to have a statute correction to do what they are supposed to do naturally? Well, you know, Bev... Out of complete, <laughs> out of complete sympathy for that person, whoever asked that question, mm-hmm. the only answer I can give you is you're dealing with crooks, and that had to be a, a Christian to ask that. And I'm getting nasty, but it had to be a good person to ask that because they think everybody's honest. No corporation is honest. They were set up on the lie to take everything you got. The Constitution of 1871 was set up to take every penny you got. Up to and including, if you can't pay, get them life insurance, kill them, put them in the ground, and then collect the insurance. So whoever Hmm. asked that question, they got a whole lot of catching up to do. Because ain't nobody honest out there but your family and the one you love. Everybody else is out to get you. That's why you got to go through it. And that's why if you learn what I know, a hundred million of them out there still don't know and don't want to learn. And you got Uncle Remus niggas like Al Sharpton and the rest of them uh, 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 Negroes that, and Jack Lake preachers will keep preaching. If you go on to heaven, you got to pay your bills. I had a mother-in-law tell me one time. I told my wife, I'm filing bankruptcy. Her mama-in-law said, oh, you can't do that. We ain't going to go to heaven. I said, nigga, please, you ain't going to heaven. I I, I, I swear, I said, you do what you want. I'm filing. And lo and behold, after I filed, they came after the wife. And I said, didn't I tell you to file? She learned the lesson because I filed three other times. I'll file tonight. I ain't got no problem with filing bankruptcy. What are you you worried about? You ain't going to heaven. <laughs> ain't nobody going to be up there but them jack leg ass preachers, and they ain't did a damn thing. No. Oh, I'll do this. <laughs> I'll get you started. <laughs> don't, 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 get, don't get me credit. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to do a show one day just on preachers. All right. Except for value verbiage on the statement and or write a private issue money order on the coupon, part of the bill, and send it to the treasury to have it set off. The only way that utility, oh, I hate to use it, utility Mm -hmm. companies, but the only way that utility companies got built is that they mortgaged a a borrow against our property and future labor compensation. Only corporations have income. So they can be taxed. They, so everything since 1933 is, listen to this word, 
prepaid. Every time you sign your signature, you pay for it. There is no need for us to pay twice. You got that? So, so when we send the set for value, you don't send it to the person that sent you the bill. You send the bill to the United States Treasury. No, no. No. You send you send the bill to whoever sent it to you, but okay. you write on it. You write on the on the coupon or the bill. Right. Which is a coupon. Pay. Pay. Uh. uh Oh, God, darling, I'm looking at it, but I got my stamps. It said pay by the United States government. I mean, United okay. States Treasury. Treasury, okay. Treasury, okay. treasury. Yeah, I'm sorry. You put on there. I, I wish I, I don't have it. Oh, yes, I do. I got it down here. For all of y'all that want to get into this, you don't know what you're doing. You need to pull this. Do you have the document up, Beth? Uh, which document? The one you're reading from? Yes. Yes, I have it up. Do you have the pages numbered? No, no, where I'm at, it don't give you a page number. It's just well, you boom. can put the, you can put a number on it. But anyway, if you go down to page seven, I'm looking at a money order. You stamp the the coupon money order, and then you stamp it, pay to the order of United States Treasury. Six eight three thousand dollars eighty. We'll write it in there, and then you do the numbers. It's right there. It tell you right there what to do. Okay. Go down till you see except. Go down till you see except for value. It's about eleven pages. Go down. Keep going down till you see A V four. Woo! I done got fired up today, Beth. Yes, you have. Uh, let me, oh, I got it. I see it. Okay, I got it. All right. Now, keep going down to the next thing. It says money order. You see that? Right up on, keep going down. Keep going down till you see except for value, exempt from levy, sign your name here, authorize. You don't, you don't see that? No, I'm probably on a different page than you are. I All right. Okay. All right. Read what you got, except for value, where you see it. Okay. Let me go back up. Oh, here it is. Okay. Except for value applies when a demand is made for payment with with implied consideration. If there right. is you wait. no original wet ink sign contract. Yes. Yes. Saying. All right. You're on page five. You're on oh, page no. five. Okay. Yep. So keep going down. And I'm on, it starts, well, I don't know, I'm on six and then what, seven. What do the paragraph start with? Which one? Okay. Six or the one you on? Oh, one I'm on. Wait a minute. It said it's the, the page starts at the top. It, it, it's a, it starts. He wrote an uh, uh, international bill of exchange. Gene Keating. It's on page six. Says he wrote a international bill of exchange on a napkin to get out of out of jail, and they gave him a receipt and thanked him and let him out of jail. You see that? Well, I'm just getting to the money order part. The statute oh. at large of the United States of America. Uh, okay. Stat. Wait a minute. Um, statute. Okay. Well, um, go ahead, you, Ryan. You, you. I don't want to stop you from where you're going. I, I, I'll um, catch up with you. All right, all right. Well, it's 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 important. Where am I at? Uh, yeah. Did you turn your? I got to turn it down. Oh my! No wonder. My stuff. Wait a minute, babe. I'm too loud. And you came in very very loud. How about now? Can you can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you. We always could. There you go. Can you hear me now? Bill, uh, right yeah. there. All right, I hit it and it went and it went up. That's why you was talking loud. All right. Okay. Now, if you go down, if you go down the money order, like I was saying, you'll see it. You got the right page, Bill. All you got to do is uh-huh. read it. Uh-huh. All right. Now, what time is it? Yep, I got time. Now, here's the hump thing. The way you gonna fight? Everybody gonna fall out. Okay. All right. Now, 
Everything we talked about in regards to faith and credit, I've been telling you for the last couple of weeks to get involved with your birth certificate. And I told you when you get the state birth certificate, it has to be authenticated. Remember I used that word in faith and credit, authenticated. Now, I'm looking at the authentication sheet because I don't know if I told you, Bill, but I got mine back from Indiana, and I've already mm-hmm. sent it to United States Secretary of Treasury. Okay. Now, I want you to listen. It's a paragraph. I, Connie Lawson, Secretary of State of Indiana, do hereby certify that according to records on file in my office, the governor, got his name, was duly elected or appointed to the office of special deputy in and for the state, I mean, in and for the Indiana State Department of Health, and that the term of said office included the date of February 2nd, 2015. I think that's when I sent it to him. That to all his or her official acts as said officer, listen carefully, full faith and credit ought to be given to all courts of justice and elsewhere, period, in testimony whereof I have here unto set my hand and cause to be affixed the great seal of the state of Indiana at Indianapolis this day, the 3rd of March, 2015. You get that? Now, that's that's what came out of Indiana. Now, I tell you, every state is different. So I got my main man here. His is from the state of Georgia. And all... To all whom these present shall come, greetings. Knew that knew ye that, and Marion Soto, and I guess Marion. I don't know who Marion Soto is, but Marion Soto. The governor's name is Nathan Deal. Now listen, whose official signature appears to the instrument of writing here too, annexed, was at the time of affixing the same here too. The duly appointed clerk, Office of Vital Statistic Records, uh, Department of Human Resources, Atlanta, Georgia, has appeared for the records of this department, and that her uh, attestation is in due form. Therefore, all due faith, credit, and authority is and ought is and ought to be had and given to her. I hereby certify that the state of Georgia, hereby certify the Secretary of State of the state of Georgia is the custodian of the great seal of the state. Given under my hand and the great seal of the state at the Capitol in Atlanta this day, the 9th of January, in the year of our Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord, 2015, the independence of the United States of America. Uh, 2,000 and 100, whatever, whatever. Now, ain't nobody passed out? <laughs> that verifies that you have you own your straw man and the government has to pay his bills. This is why I tell everybody you got to get your birth certificate and get it authenticated. Help me, somebody. Y'all don't get it? And, and, that's, and that's the key to authenticate it, because I sent for mine, and I didn't do that part. <laughs> and they sent me the county birth certificate. Well, the section that says apostle, apostle slash exemplification, that's the box you yeah. check. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Now, if y'all don't get that, you need to stay slave and go find a cotton field and get in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just go out there and say, oh, Black Joe, sing old Black Joe. Get out there and sing old Black Joe. I don't we know any other way. Come on. We got some callers. We got some callers. <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, area yeah. code 301-636. Woo! 
Hi, how Help you doing? Me somebody. Great. Okay, um now I um I've had my birth certificate um authenticated. Um it's from Washington D C and I got it yes. um uh, you know, I had it uh, done, you know, with Washington, D.C., and then took it to um, the secretary, um, you know, of state, John Kerry's office. And um, All right. I have the full faith and credit on the birth certificate. And I've been, you know, fighting, you know, with, um, you know, this stupid uh, foreclosure. I've you know, giving reversionary interest and all kinds of stuff. And I can't seem to, uh, I don't know, this this whole structure ain't doing what it's supposed to do. All right. Question to you. Did you, When you you got the uh, letter, your documents came back from uh, John Kerry signed by him? Yes. All right. You need to put together an affidavit and back it up with copies of your birth certificate that they do not own that anymore. You own it, and you feel uh, that you don't want to pay, that you're not going to pay. And I would suggest that you pay with a accept for value. Put it all in a package and send it to them. They don't have a right to even use the name. You need to copyright the name, of your your all capital name, and they can't use it anymore. You're going to sue them. Take this down, Ron Marcho at yahoo.com. Say that again, Ron. March show. Uh huh. At, at yahoo.com. And remind me of this conversation, and I'll give you some information to deal with that. Okay, because I did, I, do I did do an affidavit. I sent it by um, notary uh, presentment. I included a, oh. um, a revocation of power of attorney. I um, put in, you know, because um, I even acknowledged my deed, uh, you know, to the property. Um, right. And, you know, um, along with that, that's where I stuck, you know, my full faith and credit um, copy of the birth certificate uh, in there, along with my affidavit of ownership uh, inside Whoa. of there. <clears throat> and Whoa. I sent it to so, them. So what? Yep. And they sent me to the auction. They- I protested the auction. Um, you know, nobody, you know, bought it. Um, and even when I went to the auction, I took they they had the the law firm had sent me like a payoff, so I just converted the payoff into a money order, and I said and I had a third party give it to them. Is the you know the money yeah. orders in inside? You know that there is yes. no debt. You know. Yes. Um, and so and I I haven't heard a- anything else from them. You know. Okay. Are you still a Hold up, hold yes. up. Are you still in the house? Do yes. not leave. All right, do not leave. So now they're not going to ever acknowledge that you won. So your victory could be in them not doing anything. Now your next move would be to try and get the lien off of your house. They got a lien down at the Register of Deeds. Uh, it's called an interest, a secured interest lien. I think that's what it's called. And you can yeah. go down there and ask them, is, is this property cleared? And they'll tell you that uh, the mortgage company has a lien. You need to write the mortgage company a, a letter and tell them to take that lien off that house. Okay. You understand? Yes. You know, I, I'm not that far yet, So I, 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 but I've done everything that you said when I was in the public realm. But now that I have this, and I haven't completed it because I have not received my uh, uh, letter back from uh, uh, J- John Kerry. I just sent it last, two Saturdays, uh, you know, Saturday before last. So I got a couple of weeks to wait for it. And I can't wait to get it because I'm going to jump right in everybody's butt when I get it. And I'll have more information because I know how to do a lot of the things that you just said. Because I had a business to do it, but I was in the public realm, and they treated me like a, a stepchild. And just act like they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. But they know what you're talking about now, I can tell you that. 
So give me an uh, 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 email, and let's stay in touch, and let's move forward with it, okay? Okay, Thank and you, let Alan. me just repeat it back to you just to make sure. Ron March Show at Yahoo.com. All one, yes. yes. All, all one word, Ron March Show. Okay. All one word. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Uh, we are down to two minutes, and so the people that want to continue to hear the show, you have to. You can listen on the line, and we still have okay. some callers, Ron. Um, go, go ahead. Let's work with them. Area code three zero one four zero three. Three zero one four zero three. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, uh, Ron Monch and uh, Beverly D. This is uh, yes, Chris. Good evening, young man. Yeah, this is Chris from Maryland. Yeah, Chris. Yes, Maryland. Hey, hey, look here, Maryland. I just wanted. Yeah, I just. <laughs> you, know, you, know, oh, you know why I'm laughing. Hey, look here, brother. Hey, look here, brother. Yeah. Hey, that's what I say, people, this is, we living in a world right now, if you don't get it, you got to get this because it's like this. If you ever looked at Fred Sample, right, and he go out in the backyard, he go to the junkyard, right, that's what your name is. It's a piece of junk, okay? And we, junk. we pay all our money to the junk man, and he collect from us. So a lot of things that you can get an answer for, you want an answer for it, you can't get an answer from no junk. So... Nope. You got to read between the lines to get the information of the knowledge because he, the brain gonna tell you what you need to le- need to understand and, and listen to, and use what yep. he telling you to use, and you are gonna get out of this situation because a lot of things he said tonight, I you know I me, mean, I have done, you know, you know I read, I, I study, you know I read and study, and you know and you know I'm thankful for having a a, a, a role model. You know, because he's a leadership man. So, and you ain't going to find too many people out here <laughs> every <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> giving their heart out. You're right. And, and you, you know, yep. and, he, and, he, and, he, and he, and he, you know, and, and you know, he, he up in age. Seconds. But the thing is, he, and you know, I ain't, I'm going to cut it short. But he giving us the thing we need right now, and that's why the universe is with us. So everybody just stay yes. together and, 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 and just follow through. And I'm out. I love you. All right. And All right. All right. All right. I love Thank you. you. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. <laughs> go, we go we ahead, have Jerry. another caller at um, area code 901-281. All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, Ms. D and Mr. March, for bringing us all yes. this very informative information. I had a question right quick. All right. Mr. Mr. March, um, you were reading at the bottom of the birth certificate about the source of faith and credit. And who is the credit yes. that it's supposed to go to? The the straw man. Remember I read earlier in the show that the faith and credit, they dealt with the it they call it an entity. And one entity is responsible for the debt of the other entity. So by you okay. getting the credit by you getting your birth certificate and getting it authenticated, that means that you own the straw man now. So they can't keep doing what they did. You can't buy anything unless you uh, agree to use the straw man. Now, you got to use the straw man in order to live in America because there's no money. But now, once you get all of this and get it back from the government now, you got another step. I got another step. When I get that back from the government, I will dictate what I'm going to pay and when I'm going to pay it and how I'm going to pay it. All the rest of that, they got to eat that debt. Because okay. cause the straw well, man didn't sign the contract with me. Go ahead. Okay. When you read the bottom of the birth certificate, the authentication of it, it said yes. full full faith of credit went to who? Did it put did it say to Ron March or to whatever no, your other name no, is? No. No. No, no. When you get it back, you'll have a seal that uh, that attaches your birth certificate to the letter. 
And they are authenticating that the birth certificate is who they're talking about. They are authenticating full faith and credit to the birth certificate. Now, the surprising thing is when the birth certificate comes, it's in upper and lower caps. But if you, the, but the one you got that goes to that you went to school with was in all caps. I got both of mine right here in front. One of them says uh, Maynard County, that's in Indianapolis, Indiana, Public Health Department, and the other one says uh, uh, Bureau of Final Statistics. These are two different birth certificates. Right. What I'm Hello. Saying, what, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. When I heard you reading at the bottom bottom of the one in Georgia, it sounded like to me, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm in my 50s, so my hand might be going bad. But it sounded like <laughs> you stated full, full faith and credit went to a, a, a in, in particular person, and it wasn't your name. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just, looking at I mean, because I'm a boy, I'm, you know, I'm going you know, to my state capital, I don't even want to sit out for it. I want to sit it in my hands. I want what, to exchange right there in my what, hands. All right. What state are you are you, were you born in? I'm in Tennessee. No. Born, what state born were you born? All right. Born in Tennessee. Okay. Now, I have not did or seen any authentication from Tennessee, so I don't know how it will be worded. But I will read again what you're asking me. And it says, therefore, all, and this is the one from Georgia, therefore, all due faith, credit, and authority is and ought to be had and given to her. And they're talking about the clerk. It, that's, that's the her. I further certify that the state of the Secretary of State and the state of Georgia is is the custodian of the great seal of the state, which is right here on the on the document. Now the document and the birth certificate are attached. So they're talking about the birth certificate without using the name of it on this uh authentication. Okay. Because I, I read to you earlier, I don't know, if, I don't know if I can pick it up right away. It said in order to authenticate it, it has to be a, attached to a document, mm-hmm. and the document mm-hmm. in question here is your is your birth certificate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. okay All right. right. Thank you, caller. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks All for right. listening. We have another caller, Ron. Uh, All right. 763-391. 763-391. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Great show. Great show. Great show. I, I just oh. checked with Vital Check to see if mine went through. I'm waiting for it now. Mine did go through. I ordered it. And I, I was listening right. to what the lady was asking you, and... She missed the part earlier, earlier where they have to attach the seal. Once they attach the seal, they, they have to say that, that all those things they have to say that in order to authenticate your birth certificate. And that's yes. what she was asking. Yes. And, and yes. you, you kind of, you kind of, she, she was, she was try, trying to figure that out where that came in there. And they do it all different. I, it it cl- finally clicked in my head as I'm sitting here listening what was happening because. I, it didn't make sense to me until you brought up this good faith and credit. But I, I looked up something else. There's another trust that says the same thing. There's a trust, Old Age Survivors Insurance Trust Fund. <laughs> whoa, and they, whoa. And they, they, when they, I put that in when you was talking, and there's, a, and there's a trust fund. It's called Old Age and Survivors Trust Insurance Fund. And they and they oh. just passed the law on it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I just so I, <laughs> I'm so it, it tonight you know, was powerful. Let me tell you, man, oh man, let me tell you what that is, brother. That is when they make your birth certificate the original and set up this straw man. At the same time, they take out a death insurance. So they win either way. You never. <laughs> oh my you God! Can... <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I read it, I, put, I took that out, 
and, oh, and Google man. that, and the Social Security office holds the money, and 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 uh, is the is the uh, what's the word? Uh, they are the they are the uh, officiator of said trust, Social Security Administration. Wow. So they get you going and coming. So once you get out of the system, the the straw man is dead. So they're going to collect on that death on that old age pension. Ain't that nothing? <laughs> wow. Supposedly wow. Pay me. Yeah. It's supposed to pay old age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you remember? Yeah, who? yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Who's paying that? They paying it. Who's paying that? They're probably <laughs> taking it out of your Cisco account to make it payments. Says, it says taxes to... are deposited in the fund on every business day. Wow. <laughs> so that's wow. like in- interest every day. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. And since I told you that by the age of 18, your account is worth at least 85 to $90 million. So a life insurance policy would be very easy. They could just take it out and pay it every month. Ain't no big deal. I'm going to hang up. De- death die, insurance, I- not, life, not life insurance, death insurance. <laughs> Oh, you never okay. collect from a you never collect from a life yes. insurance policy until you're dead. No. Goodbye. Yes. 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 Thank you, yes. Carla. Excellent call. Thank you. Yes. 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 Oh my God. They're gonna collect when you die, not when you're alive. They co- they want you dead. And black folks, they surely gonna take it out because they get shot in the street. Please kill them. They make money. All that kid crap. It all goes back to the government. Mm, mm, mm. We got another call, Ron. Come, come on with it. Yes. Uh, area code two zero five three six five. Area code two zero five three six five. Are you there? Okay. They must have pushed the button by mistake. All right. Okay. Okay, I think that is it. I think let me check this one. Uh nine eight zero. Did did we talk to you already? Two three zero. Yeah, I think we talked to that one. That's it, Ron. Oh, wait a minute, Ron. They won't let you go. Wait a minute. Uh right. area code eight oh four six two four. Yeah. <laughs> area code eight oh four six two four. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Ron. Oh. What about, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, area code 980 Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. I got another question. All right, Leon, come on with it. We talked we talk right. to you already? Yeah, you talked yes. to me. I mean, if you don't want, if I can't ask another question, then I won't. But, I mean, you know. Come on, go ahead, go ahead. Come on, come on, come on. Come on with hey, really, it, come on with it. Well, well, well much, man, I like you, man. When are you going to be speaking or doing something in the city of Detroit, man, so uh, somebody can, we can sit down and actually talk. A person won't have to ask all these questions <laughs> over the radio. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I've been all over. Take my website and and uh, uh, email me, and I'll let you know. I don't have anything okay. scheduled right now, but okay, I'll let you know. Cool. We'll stay in touch. We'll okay, stay in I, touch. I, I, got the, I'll, I'll I got the email. I got the email. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Miss Beverly D. Be- Beverly D. That she had a problem getting her. So I hope all the people in Michigan don't have problems, uh, you know, trying to get their real long form birth certificate. Because I definitely want to apply for mine. No, I did. I just did mine wrong. I didn't have. It wasn't. I just did it wrong. Oh, you just did it wrong. Okay. 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 Yeah, I misunderstood yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. I y'all. ordered my son. Uh, yes. All right. Talk to you. Okay. Beverly, all right. I ordered. I ordered my son's uh, yesterday, and okay. I got an email today that everything is a is a go. They yeah. did not ask 
they did not ask for a birth a picture. I don't know why, but he was born in Michigan in, in uh, Michigan, and I filled it out. But they didn't say send them a uh, you know what they what you've been talking about. But when I did mine with Indiana, they made me send them a picture. So I don't know how they're doing that. Yeah, it wasn't mine. I don't know. Uh... I don't know what happened. Maybe because, you know, I sent for the birth certificate. Then I was the wrong one. Then I turned back around and sent for it again. And you know how they ask you questions for security? And those questions yep. they were asking me, I didn't, they, that wasn't pertaining to me. So I'm thinking it was another person. Same thing. Yeah. All right. So we'll see what happened. If I have to go to Lansing, I'll go to Lansing. All right, and I can help you on that because it's cheaper to go to Lansing than it is to deal with the mail. Oh, well, I would have rolled up there. So we'll, we'll yep. see what happens. I'll just go up there. So until next Wednesday, Ron, uh, thank yes. you. All and right. we appreciate you. And we'll All right. talk to you All right. again. And you got to have right. uh, Maureen and them back on again. Yeah, I'm going to talk to them. Uh, uh, next week I'm going to talk to them and go from there. Okay. okay. All right. Well, All thank right. you, Ron. Peace and love. I okay. think peace and love, babe. Yep. Bye now. Okay. And thanks for listening, and we shall return next uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm.